This is an in-service training program presented by Nutrition Care Systems. Today's topic is foodborne illness. Today's learning objectives are number one, explain who is at risk for developing foodborne illness. Number two, understand what bacteria is and how it grows. Number three, identify bacteria that cause foodborne illness. And number four, know how to prevent foodborne illness. Let's talk about the definition of foodborne illness. Foodborne illness is the disease that's transmitted by food and the most frequent cause is harmful microorganisms or the poisons that are produced by those harmful microorganisms. The CDC estimates that 48 million foodborne illness cases occur in the United States every year, and at least 128,000 Americans are hospitalized and 3,000 die after eating contaminated food. A foodborne illness outbreak occurs when two or more people become ill after eating the same food, and a laboratory analysis confirms the food was the source of the illness. Bacteria can also be transmitted through humans, animals, dust, particles, or contaminated water. So who's at risk for developing foodborne illness? Well, that would be the very young infants and preschoolers, typically under the age of four, very old, elderly or those in nursing homes, typically over the age of 65, pregnant women, and then anyone with weakened immune systems. So what are bacteria and how do they grow? They are invisible, single-celled organisms or microorganisms that take nourishment, produce waste, and multiply. It takes about 100,000 bacteria to cover the head of a pin. And bacteria reproduce by dividing. A single cell can become billions in 10 to 12 hours. What are bacteria and how do they grow? Bacteria are the greatest threat to food safety. Bacteria cause the most cases of foodborne illness. To survive, bacteria need food, slightly acidic conditions, temperature, time, oxygen, and moisture. Bacteria can live with, which is aerobic, or without anaerobic oxygen. So what are potentially hazardous foods? Those are foods in which bacteria multiply and grow rapidly. Potentially hazardous foods contain the nutrients, conditions, and moisture that bacteria love for growing. Examples would include meat, poultry, eggs, fish, seafood, milk, raw seed sprouts, melons, anything like that. So the temperature danger zone is 41 to 135. That's the range in which most bacteria love to grow rapidly. And remember that freezing or refrigerating slows bacterial growth, but it doesn't stop it. So to protect our customers against foodborne illness, we're going to make sure we limit the time food spends in the temperature danger zone. Talk a little bit about E. coli. Its formal name is E. coli 0157 semicolon H7. Many people infected with E. coli develop severe diarrhea and painful abdominal cramps. Most cases are from undercooked ground beef. So we want to make sure we cook our ground beef to 155 degrees to destroy the bacteria. So we'll talk a little bit about salmonella. There's over 1 million cases of salmonella each year, and it's often related to poultry and poultry products. Bacteria are killed when the food is thoroughly, thoroughly cooked, for example, to 165 degrees. Uh, cooked food that stands at room temperature for a long time, especially poultry, is at risk for getting salmonella. Also make sure you use eggs with clean, intact shells. Another cause for salmonella is poor personal hygiene or cross-contamination. So again, make sure you have proper personal hygiene and avoid any kind of cross-contamination. Make sure hands are washed thoroughly after using the bathroom and before handling food. And don't allow an infected person to handle food or work in the kitchen. Let's briefly talk about listeria. Listeria grows well in very damp environments like floor sinks or drains or corners of the refrigerator. It's also found in unpasteurized dairy products and deli meats. It can cause meningitis in compromised individuals. And listeria can grow at refrigerated temperatures, so we want to make sure we follow the use-by and sell-by dates on specific processed foods.
Staphylococcus is an illness that's caused by a toxin that can't be destroyed by cooking. We're gonna make sure we practice good personal hygiene and don't allow workers with infected cuts to handle foods. Also, a person can get sick within one to six hours of being infected with Staphylococcus. Botulism can grow in an anaerobic environment, one with no oxygen. And the symptoms of botulism can be very serious, double vision, vertigo, and difficulty speaking. You want to make sure you dispose of canned foods that are leaking, bulging, dented, or damaged, like this can you see in the slide. And also be aware that botulism can cause death. So things to keep in mind to prevent foodborne illness. Properly cook the foods to specified internal temperatures. Make sure we wash all produce before using. We also want to serve our hot foods hot, meaning they have to be 135 degrees or above, and cold foods cold at 41 degrees or below. We also want to practice good personal hygiene all the time because humans can spread germs from coughing, sneezing, spitting, and intestinal tract waste. We also want to prevent foodborne illness by avoiding cross-contamination, limit the time food spends in the temperature danger zone, exclude workers with diarrhea, fever, or vomiting, wash hands frequently, and clean and sanitize work areas throughout the day. Let's test your knowledge of foodborne illness. Question number one, the following people are at risk for developing foodborne illness except A, healthy adults, B, very young, C, pregnant women, or D, very old. The answer to question number one, the following people are at risk for developing foodborne illness except, and that would be A, healthy adults. Question number two, to survive, bacteria need which of the following? A, moisture, B, temperature, C, time, or D, all of the above. And the answer to question number two, to survive, bacteria need which of the following? Bacteria need all of the above. D, moisture, temperature, and time. Question number three, what is the temperature danger zone? A, 41 to 140, B, 40 to 135, C, 40 to 140, or D, 41 to 135. The answer to question number three, what is the temperature danger zone? The answer is D, 41 to 135. Question number four is a true or false question. Most cases of E. coli are due to undercooked eggs. True or false? And the answer to question number four, most cases of E. coli are due to undercooked eggs. Answer is false. E. coli is often related to undercooked ground beef. Question number five, a food service worker who has diarrhea can continue to work as long as they wear gloves. True or false? Question number five, a food service worker who has diarrhea can continue to work as long as they wear gloves. Of course the answer is false. If someone has diarrhea, they need to go home. Thank you for your participation in today's program. Our goal is for you to use this information in your daily work. We hope you are well served today and every day. If you would like more information about our in-service training programs or consulting dietitian services, please contact us at 1-800-761-9200 or nutritioncaresystems.com.